thank you very much uh, for Sorry. Microsoft Vietnam uh, to have me here uh, to speak about uh, Dr. Su Dong Wong. Normally, we call him XD. Uh, so, I just to make fun, so we probably divide into two groups. Okay, so one on that side and one on this side and see who we win when I ask a question. You know, so we can have the positive energy. So, you just say the name of the person and then I will hear and then we will hear which side louder and XD will vote for that. So, which person today Today, which person in this room is the member of the Microsoft Big Brain? No, 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 I just want to take a look. It's the technical it's fellow it's team. I want to see the and Vietnamese he has things, been with computers. Microsoft more than 29 years so far. Okay, I didn't hear it. Okay, thank you. In 2016, who is named by the Wire magazine as one of the 25 genius of the world. And he also owned more than 170 US patents. And his impact, for, impact to a billion of people through the Azure AI that enable product and services. Who is it? Okay. I think this side is louder, so on this side you need to compete. Who is the member of the Wing Future Prize Council who has been the pioneer for Andy on the last scale deep learning that's disrupted the world speech recognition industry. I also give you the hint. He is also named as Mr. Speech for nearly three decades, who also instrumental creating the first Microsoft speech application programming interface they call SAPI in 1995, when Bill Gates still in charge of Microsoft. Again, just last week, he also received the IEEE Bose Industrial Leader 2023. Haven't announced yet, but it will be announced soon. In the recognition of making the impact into the R&D for speak in the world. Who is it? <laughs> okay, I, I think this side still wins, so work hard on this side, please. There are, there are more people on that side. <laughs> yeah. So, at the end of the day, I want to share um, very fortunate to me that I have been working for Microsoft 12 years. And during that 12 years, XD is my mentor. And I have learned many things about him, especially before I went and become one of the founding members in Microsoft Suzhou. He told me, good is not enough. In Microsoft, many good people that can do the job, but good is not enough. So, only great to differentiate for you. So I'd like to share his advice today to you. Besides, he also gave me the advice of how to live happily. Give back is the empowerment of a human to the order. And today, he come to do this speech 
is about giving back to the young. And the last but not least is living with the mindset of attitude of gratitude. Thank you, XD. Thank you, thank you, Steve. Um, it's good to be here. I think the Future Prize Council brought me to Vietnam. This is the first time I'm visiting the country. It's a beautiful country, full of uh, great people, young, energized. Uh, so I'm happy to share some of the work we're doing. Um, basically, introduce what there is available. Hopefully, you can make uh, more revenue for Microsoft. <laughs> Double or triple, right? Um, so the talk I, I want basically is just introduce what is available. Um, OK. So I'm going to use PowerPoint. I turned on the translation of subtitle into Vietnamese. Um, I don't know. It's not working. <laughs> oh, maybe I didn't, I, I didn't turn it on. Let's see. Slideshow. Oh, with, uh, subtitle. Vietnamese it is. Maybe start again. Maybe, oh, I don't have the internet. I you should have the internet, right? The internet, right? Yes, it now it, it does. Yeah. Now it's, uh, it's out. Yes. Vietnamese was the latest added to PowerPoint. If the accuracy is not good, it's your fault. <laughs> you know why? Because you guys didn't help to contribute data to Microsoft AI. So every opportunity is get you guys help Microsoft doing the hackathon on a daily basis. It's not one week. It's the whole year. Two years. If you, you know, you're here for five years, you should just contribute data to Microsoft all the time, every day, when you talk. Your precious voice will really help Microsoft AI to get much better. So this is being used in production. I think the Teams team also got the translation into Vietnamese ready. ready. Yes. So make sure you start using it. If you want to do more, install Group Transcribe. That is a free app on iPhone. You can speak in Vietnamese, transcribe everything. Um, you can enable multiple people holding the device to themselves. Enable everyone to speak it in their own language. And there's actually a button you can go to setting, donating data to Microsoft AI. Make sure you turn that on. Then you are just con contributing the oxygen to Microsoft, making the quality improving on a daily basis. So I want to just you know, say a few words. I'm not the, the person Stephen talked about. Right? I'm just a humble guy. And I spend the, you know, time struggling in four universities. Okay? Most of the people, they probably go to one university. I, I went to four different schools. Um, but I really enjoyed those four schools. But what is even better, I spent more than half of my life in one company. I think uh, it's not because I couldn't find a job anywhere. I could find the different schools, right? So clearly, I, I had the opportunity, but I love the company. I'm still here because this company is simply fantastic to fulfill the, the dream, to help everyone and every organization on the planet to achieve more. That's a very meaningful goal, especially when you reach the age like me. I'm, what does Stephen say? I'm just an old guy, useless. Right? But in the Asian culture, old guys got a wisdom, right? And that is important. So hopefully I can share some of the learnings and the wisdom with all of you today. And then we're open for questions. OK? How, by the way, how is the translation so far? Awesome? Yeah. So you're basically saying you are doing a good job. Yeah. <laughs> it's very close, to be honest. And then very close is not good enough. Got to be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so you still, have, you still have work to do. 
Okay. Who is, is now? So leave it to the youngster yes. around there. So yeah. every Microsoft office should really dog fooding Microsoft product. Turn on the data donation program. What is the point to keep your voice to yourself? Yeah. Right? I just don't know, unless you have some secretive conversation, <laughs> and that's actually not uh, very, very decent, you can turn that off. But if you just, you know, you want to see what is going on, with the caption turned on, I guarantee this will improve your communication, make the whole job better. So every time when you use the product, if you use Microsoft PowerPoint, using Teams, because we are commercial enterprise grade product. Those data are sent to Azure, got the process, then delete it right away. The only mechanism you can use the consumer oriented product to donate data is group transcribe. Even by default, we're so <coughs> decent, we didn't turn it on. You have to go to setting, turn it on on donating data, then everything is great. I hope when you go to another subsidiary, ask them whether it's Cambodia, Laos, Thailand. We just do not have coverage on the, you know, those the new developing economies. Yeah. We need more data. We have lots of data in English. If you want to contribute your English with Vietnamese accent, we welcome that too. We are truly DNI oriented. Believe me, this is a you know, the product that is embracing DNI more wholeheartedly than anything else you have ever imagined. So here's the, the journey I have with Microsoft. Um, I've basically started the spoken language research in Microsoft in 1993. It's going to be 30 years, just in a few weeks. Um, then I brought a speech to <coughs> Windows 95. That was the first Windows speech API. Um, 20 years after that, exactly 20 years after that, I think, 2005, Microsoft launched Azure speech API. I happened to be the same guy. Didn't get myself fired. So we transformed from Windows API into cloud API, reflecting Microsoft's journey of transforming the business. So we have uh, achieved a numerous human parity on AI breakthroughs, from speech recognition to machine translation to computer vision. Um, I'm now leading Azure cognitive services. That's what I want to talk to you about. And hopefully we can find a very powerful customers in Vietnam, especially like, you know, WinBrain should pay more to Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> of course, right. the conditions you have to make money. You get more money from your customers, so we win together, right? So this chart summarizes what it is. Azure Cognitive Services covered uh, a lot of pillars, like computer vision, speech recognition or text-to-speech or speaker recognition, language services. I would put OpenAI into that language services. GBT, you must have heard about the GBT or chat GBT. Yes? If you have not, you, have, you, you can try chat GBT. It's a, from OpenAI. That is really one of the biggest surprise to almost everyone. And we have business decision. So that is the collection of all the a AI services Microsoft got. The three big pillars are really speech, computer vision, those are the perceptive AI, and the language. Language, the biggest bad is Azure OpenAI services. We partnered with OpenAI. We brought the GBT capability to Azure. If you got the customers going to OpenAI using that the API, number one, there's no guarantee on the quality of the services. Could crash any time, but the most important, like, our group transcribe is uh, you know, consumer-oriented thing. The data will get, obviously, there's no protection like Azure. So Azure Open Air services, like the rest of the cognitive services, will protect data 
for our customers. Data will come to Azure, we'll process data, we'll get results back to you, data get deleted, very clean. So it's actually a great value proposition for our customers, even though we're not getting data to improve our AI. That's why I'm begging you, using group transcribe kind of app, or being consumer-oriented app, then we can gather the oxygen to improve the quality of AI. So, Satya in the earning call just last week said something very powerful. Um, the way we approach the AI really can be summarized with three layers. The Azure infrastructure, even with amazing GPT or chat GPT from OpenAI, the whole OpenAI infrastructure is built on Azure. So there's an infrastructure layer. We are the supercomputer for all the AI research, whether it's you know, cognitive services, what we do internally, or Azure OpenAI, or DALI. The second layer is Azure cognitive services is the API for all the workload to rely on. That's the second layer, sitting on Azure for all the web developers, all the PC developers, all the Mac developers, or anything you can think of. They can consume our API in the most scalable fashion, most cost-effective fashion, to have the best quality you can imagine. And then, because of that API, you can delight a large number of applications from Copilot, that is what is being used to help developers to write the code, to DAX, which is really a nuanced medical summarization product to help doctors write the summary for the patient conversation. So I want to just actually sh show a number of examples of the capability of Azure Cognitive Services. So this is the example of Florence, new Florence capability. Florence is the code name we use for computer vision. Um, that is the cover story from The Economist. Basically, this foundation model could just understand what is going on from the image. Then we linked with Azure OpenAI services of GPT, telling you the story. That's exactly what is actually the output from two cognitive services. One is computer vision, Florence. The other one is Azure OpenAI services. Put together, you can really tell the story of this econ economist magazine. That's just one example of the capability. As a matter of fact, on the image, cap image captioning, basically, you take a look of one photo, you tell the story. Azure computer vision services based on Florence surpass the human's capability. So this is being used in PowerPoint for accessibility and LinkedIn, et cetera. But if you want to have a, a education application to teach kids what the, the language is, you can just use our neural text to speech, tell them the story from any photo. Sometimes that is actually really, really powerful. Even using the mama's voice of the child. Just imagine that scenario. All those capabilities are available. For example, Skype call, using one sentence of the person, you can customize your voice with a text-to-speech engine from cognitive services. Then you can translate this into one of the 140 languages in your own voice. So when you're talking to someone <coughs> in Ar Arabic country, you can speak Vietnamese, and you can hear Arabic of your own voice spoken to the other person. The other person will speak Arabic, but uh, will be translated into Vietnamese in that person's voice. So those capabilities are just you know, game changing, but we're not telling our story. So who actually knows about this capability in Skype? Nobody. You guys are not good salespeople. You, you, you need to know what is the product capability and product truth. Of course, you don't have responsibility to sell Skype, so it's not your fault. 
But what I'm telling you, what I'm saying is, based on Azure cognitive services, you can fulfill a lot of different scenarios. Whether it's a Skype or Teams or PowerPoint, or even the Economist magazine like this one, it's all based on Azure cognitive services. Another story, this is a video of uh, what is happening in Africa. So there are a lot of companies working on autonomous driving. I challenge them. If you put your autonomous vehicle in safari, do you know what is going to happen? Facing this strange animal, probably they have not even seen from the street of the data they collected. Here's what the Azure Cognitive Services can provide. You feed the video, we're trying to explain to you what is going on. Tracking the object, interpret each object, what is going on. And what is even more interesting is, then we can summarize the whole video sequence, then create a fake voice of me with my permission. That is not me. It's actually generated by Azure Cognitive Services, speaking the story. I didn't say that, okay? Cognitive service said that. Summarize the video as if that person is the anchor person explaining what is going on. So you just put the Azure Cognitive Services vision capability, summarization capability, and the text to speech capability all together. You create a scenario of fake the TV station, telling the story. Of course, you can do this in Vietnamese. So when I was in the dinner last night, I talked to Mr. Fan. You can speak your, your own language. You, there's no need for you to learn English at all. And the AI, very soon, will help to facilitate better than the person he hired I don't know how much she paid to translate every sentence. Okay. Hmm. So how much time do we have? Should we continue or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's just 5.30. Yes. 5.30, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, do, I already spent 30 minutes yeah. with all of you. And let's see if I can have this. I have one more example here. I I'm going to jump around, OK? So when I talked to Mr. Fan, I said, very soon. This is actually the product you can buy from Amazon. Amazon is the e-commerce website in the US. Cost about 379 It's a kind of AR glasses. Um, those guys use our Azure Cognitive Services, help you to translate when you talk, project into the glasses. So I will show the video here between Chinese and English. So all those Chinese, they can watch Korean TV series without worrying about the translating anything. If you guys have good Vietnamese TV series, you can sell that to China without having anything translated. So this is the product you can buy today. They even actually didn't bother to tell us how to use our API. They just used it. They shipped it and paying us, of course. Imagine this kind of technology can apply to uh, blind people. Yeah. Yeah, they can see, you know, they can read. Yeah. That's right. So, that's just, you know, I, I want to show a few demos instead of uh, and going through all the things, okay? Let's see, show another demo. Um,
So this is another pro prototype demo. So essentially, we can translate from multiple languages to multiple languages with one deep neural networks. And you can actually speak any languages without worrying about which language you're speaking. It's a little bit more expensive, but uh, the capabilities are there. Now let's talk about a little bit of the short, um, shortcoming. So Stanford in 2021 published the AI index. What they have done is they interviewed a, a group of white people in the US and a group of black people in the US. That was alone. <laughs> <laughs> then they pointed out, Jesus, you know, from Apple to IBM to Google to Amazon to Microsoft, there's a big gap between the black English and the white English. White English is kind of a standard one, you know, spoken in the TV station. But this group of black people are in North Carolina mm -hmm. with strong accent. And the, the gap is substantial. Yes, Microsoft Azure Cognitive Services also performed poorly for the black speakers. But there's an actual side benefit on their AI index. We not only have the lowest error rate across all competitors out there, the gap was also the smallest. So today, if you measure the, the green bar against what is in production, it's roughly in the same place of the blue. The gap was close. But our blue is also getting lower. There's still a gap, but the gap is much smaller. So we are the unquestioned leader in delivering the best quality in comparison to any, anyone. Of course, they only measure the black English and the white English, right? Mm -hmm. But the question can be answered. If someone is telling you Vietnamese quality is not as good, you should just say, hey, come to Microsoft Office, contribute some data, then we solve the problem. Seriously, this is not a joke. This is just the lack of data is uh, one of the problems on the quality, on the perceived quality. But the recipe, the ability to scale on a global scale and uh, driving amazing efficiency, the cost of goods of this one is unbelievable. We are far more efficient than any, anyone out there. The, the distance between us and the number two is substantial. Someone bragged about their quality you have not measured on how expensive it is to transcribe one hour of speech on Azure. So that's the, the speech summary. But I also want to talk about, they say, even Skype offered this production, but that one of the highest standard in the industry is BBC News. I want you to check if you can tell the difference between the anchor person, professional anchor person from BBC Radio versus the person could be just sleepy using Azure AI to do the work. A mouse is kind of You can assume. I can't control the mouse here. Um, all right, here it is. Good. Yeah. I don't, my mouse is not a, yeah, my mouse is not working well today. Okay, let's see. What is going on? Need to uh, go to show. 
Slideshow. But this one should be able to play as well. Slideshow didn't, didn't work. I saw the, the mouse before. Okay. That, right there. Yeah. yeah. But the, when, once I move down. Okay. Good. That it didn't play. No, it didn't play. Anyway, you can trust me. You cannot tell the difference. <laughs> All right. So then I will jump to the language. So language is the biggest one is probably Azure OpenAI services. This is the one, the model is from OpenAI. Uh, it's one of the cognitive services that uh, you can really trust Microsoft not to keep your data with the ability to scale with um, quality you need for commercial application. So GBT, DALI, and uh, all those capabilities are available. As cognitive services is the interface to our large language model, to our speech model, to our vision, to enable developers to really create the most exciting transformative applications. So this is the one that I think will have tremendous opportunity in Vietnam. If there are opportunities to land AI, mm -hmm. cognitive services could enable, you have the capability to integrate a, our API for the needs of customers, increase Azure revenue. This is direct Azure revenue, okay? Uh, I want to highlight one of the key benefits of their capabilities, really reinforcement learning from human feedback. So they trained this massive language model in GPT-3, but the chat GPT, as you can see, is a, a branch out from GPT with human in the loop, that could improve the perceived quality substantially. ChatGPT really generated a lot of excitement in the US, surprised lots of people. The usage just went up like crazy. In a few weeks, they, I think they got probably five million active users. And it, if you have not tried, it's worthwhile. This is the one model that can do almost anything. Yeah. Not necessarily the best, the most cost-effective way, but the, if you want to you know, write anything in English beautifully, you can do that. Yeah. There's a real story I want to share with you. On one of the weekend, um, we just had a party with a doctor couple, both husband and wife, they are medical professional. Then one of them said, wow, well, I just hate this report I have to write. It's about a new drug. It's going to cost me at least three hours to write up. It's going to be like two to three pages medical report about this effectiveness of new drug. I said, well, have you heard about the chat GPT? She said, no. Then I, I told her exactly what I told you. Oh, I want to try. Then she got the account to sign up, provided the, feed, you know, the outline. One, two, three, four. Then I told her, what is it you want? Write the two-page report, the query. And GPT, Chat GPT started writing a two-page report. There were a number of errors, probably 20% of them just not accurate. Then she said, well, fix this one, fix that one, focus on what I want. Rewrite it. They fixed all the problems, we did rewrite. Can you imagine how much time that saved her from two hours to 10 minutes? So if you have any kids, they're going to school to write a good report. <laughs> Don't trust because they can just use ChatGPT to write beautiful things. And what is actually amazing is you want to translate this into another language. You say translate this article into any language. They will just do the same thing. So it's very versatile. And can you imagine for the creative 
work professional, right? You need to write this stuff for your boss. Then your boss will give you a lot of stuff to read, to learn, consuming most of the people's professional time. AI today can help you really finish all of them. Even professional writers could be out of a job. That is the stunning moment. The reality is that this generative AI will give you 10 to 20% residual errors. If you're not careful, you can, that can ruin your reputation, even your career. So, but it's good to help you brainstorm, make sure you still have to do the work. Otherwise, if you can trust that computer AI to do 100, mm -hmm. then, then I don't know what is left for us. So the editorial work, make sure you have good eyes to catch the hallucination is going to be super important. But what I'm saying is <clears throat> the creative work with AI to help you brainstorm. If you have no idea, ask ChatGPT what it is you want to do. They will tell you what it is they want to do. Because I saw you know, a lot of great questions with amazing answers, well-rounded. As good as most of the PMs we have in Microsoft or salespeople. If you don't know how to sell the product, ask ChatGPT how to sell the product. They will actually tell you amazing story. So this is the, one of the biggest surprises in 2022, in my opinion, in terms of landing AI, creating you know, breakthrough technology. The good news is that ChatGPT or GPT, they were trained on Azure, influenced on Azure. The infrastructure is really you know, world class. And we're going to offer this as part of cognitive services to delight everyone in terms of using AI to create a game-changing applications. Those are the three points that Satya just talked about in the earnings call last week. It's, it's great. So now I want to talk about a vision to close. How, how much time do I have left? I showed you the Safari video, right? The, the, ten minutes. the technology behind it is really this one. With one unified foundation model of computer vision, we achieved the close to state-of-the-art performance in 40 different categories. This is just absolutely stunning. It's like the GBT for language. This is the computer vision equivalent. So we are just so busy to get this wrapped up, to upgrade the cognitive services, and all the customers will be able to benefit the amazing power of understanding what is going on around us. So I will show you some of the examples. We suddenly got the open world recognition capability. Um, for example, so now call me rich. Jesus, we can recognize that. Mm -hmm. And even there's a very famous Chinese painting in the Song Dynasty, about a thousand years old. The system knows what the heck it is. Qingming Festival painting. Yeah, Qingming Shanghe Tu. So this is the example of image captioning. Just look at the, the detail, right? A close-up of a pipe. That was an old AI. With Florence, we have a sewing machine with a needle and a thread. Just look at the difference between the previous one and the, the new one. On deck, is understood. She was playing music on deck. Now, I want to show you some amazing semantic capability. You can do the search on your one drive. Suddenly, for example, smiling children. We understood semantically from your language, your query. This is not based on the web search engine with click signal, you can do all those things. On, mm. on the personal photo, all those details can be actually processed and organized. So that is semantic capability is part of Florence. Just like image captioning, we can describe on this image what it, the heck it is. If you want to find the image, what it is, 
You don't need just search based on time or based on the idea of the person. You can say people using public transportation. Look, they, though, from your personal photo, those capabilities will be part of the solution, all based on cognitive services API. All right? So the future of AI, I want to use this to close. You guys know about IBM PC, yep. DOS? You're not that old. <laughs> How many people have used that DOS? Great. All right. And of course, the most famous invention was the Xerox PARC graphic user interface, right? Apple borrowed that. Microsoft borrowed that. Changed the whole industry. We reached the same moment. AI API, Azure Cognitive Services API reached the same moment, historic moment, for us to embrace all those API capability to create the integrative AI. That will be the next GUI moment. That's how exciting it is. So you guys are here in sales, integration, consulting. All those APIs are available. Now you understand the capability and the potential. Consume those API. You can really deliver high value scenarios for your customers. Yep. If Vietnamese quality is not there, no problem. Group transcribe is the answer. So that's my talk. Thank you very much. So.